Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to what is potentially the very last build we are going to be primarily building out of wood. This is going to be our last vehicle which will be spawned before we fight against the Lightning Hoods. And it's going to be a submarine, it's going to have a very mild shield, and most importantly, it's going to have laser defense which some of the shields will be anyway, but when I'm talking about laser defences in the future, most likely I am talking about the laser warners and the smoke dispensers. Already, lasers are fairly weak underwater. I think there may be a way to augment this, which I will look to in a second, but either way, smoke dispensers will make this lovely craft incredibly difficult to kill from laser damage, so that will be very, very nice indeed. Since we are still building out of wood, any extra defense is very, very welcome. So this is just the very front section, as you can see, it's still mostly hollow, I haven't done the internal armor, I haven't done any compartments, it's just a lump of wood with a little seating area, yay! So I'll be right back once I've made a little bit more progress so I can talk more, and after I've had a quick look-see, to see if there is actually any way to upgrade laser damage underwater. I know for a fact there's this, the Laser Wave Front Adjuster, but this is, let's have a quick look-see, it allows a small amount of damage to go through laser shields and smoke piercing. So that's pretty cool, but apparently is at the cost of outright damage. I've never used this, so I'm not going to pretend to really understand it completely. I'm not a massive fan of lasers anymore. I do like them, but I prefer cannons, I prefer missiles. I just like being able to see the shell going towards the target. That's also why I'm not a huge fan of particle cannons, even though they can be incredibly fun. And honestly, they are very good on subs, but they also cost a lot of engine power, so maybe in the future, when we make our first larger submarine, I will use a particle cannon, but for now, we are going to be focusing on advanced cannons and torpedoes. The more usual stuff for something like this. So I think for the advanced cannons under the water, what we're going to use is just regular armor-piercing rounds, because hopefully the enemy won't have shields underneath them, since we will be fighting against essentially the very bottom of the hull of ships, and then the face of enemy subs, and the bottom of enemy aircraft. That's the thought anyway. We can always change these later without any major cost. Now the last thing I do want, if I can find the thing... So let's do a quick test fire using the shells we made a moment ago. Yep, that is a very, very fast fire rate. That is 1,200 rounds per minute. Which isn't bad for such a small cannon. Okay, doing a lot of internal damage, despite the fact we don't have any of the settings right now, so it's just targeting random blocks. Yep, that will be absolutely fine as soon as it's all fixed. Now, the thing with this cannon is it has one very strong point and one very weak point. The strong point is, for its size, it shoots for a ridiculous amount of time, almost three minutes, and it has a very high fire rate. The downside is that the reload takes almost two minutes because there wasn't enough space for enough inputs. So basically, it can fire all the battle unless the battle lasts over three minutes, which hopefully it simply won't. So let's continue to armor up everywhere since I am terrified of lasers at the moment, and let's continue. I will go back and do the turret cap later. That's what I normally do anyhow. I didn't have mirror mode on. Admittedly, I don't do that all that often anymore, forget that that's a thing, but sometimes, sometimes I do. Okay, so now onwards to the next room, which will arguably be the most important room. In this room, we are going to have the hydrofoils, or at least some of them. We are going to be adding the dedicated Hellerblade spinners, and my personal favourite, we will also be adding the torpedo systems. A very little known fact, but Lathrix actually really likes missiles. Missiles are Lathrix's favourite weapon, and as such, 
We have breaching missiles. Missiles which will go above the water and then go towards the target in a really, really awesome display. So that was test fire number one. Of course, these missiles haven't been set up properly just yet. But my god, that's going to be so much fun when they're finished. And yes, we are still adding torpedoes. But first, missiles. So here we see one of the issues of making a sub from something which floats. Not only does wood float in this game, it's kind of ridiculous how aggressively it floats sometimes. If you have a single wooden block and put it underneath the water, it can simply rocket up out of the water and sort of bounce for a while. So making an entire craft out of it, which you want to fully submerge, is a little bit challenging. Right now, we don't have any air pumps. We are actually sort of flooding several sections of the craft, and yet it's floating as if it has some balance. Yeah, we are definitely going to need some of the dedicated Hellerblade spinners hooked up to the control blocks and the PID system. Otherwise, I just can't see this working, even with the hydrofoils which would definitely work, it would get it underneath the water, I just can't imagine it being stable enough, especially as it takes damage. And the last thing we want is this thing to just sit there like this, because it's a pretty big target. Okay, I think this is how we're going to do the back section. We're going to have a second turret, which is an exact replica of the one on the front, and hopefully both of them being on the same level won't really have too many issues, since we will very rarely be firing at something directly in front of us or directly behind us. So that would make a lot of sense. I'm hoping. Anyway, let's get back to armoring everything up so that we have a final center of mass, so that we can start putting down all of the dedicated Hellerblade spinners and everything else. Now before I forget, there we go, we've just added a tiny little mini missile system which contains our radars. This way, we can detect things above the water absolutely fine, because otherwise, all we have is our sonar, which means we would only be able to fight other subs and other ships. This way, we can target things above the water, such as planes and all sorts of good stuff like that, so that is absolutely fine. And then, all of the other detection systems we're going to add, thankfully, do work even looking through the water. Okay, so first test run, we are using a single section of hydrofoils with a PID system. And clearly, I need more in addition to actually turning on some pitch control. But still... At least this thing kind of submerged, which honestly I didn't expect considering just how much wood this thing is actually made of. A couple of rotor blades on the front and the ion thrusters being turned on and already we have the pitch stabilizing itself. And the altitude is looking pretty good as well. Okay, so getting there, certainly getting there, but not quite. The amount of lift the wood is producing is absolutely stupid. It's really difficult to make this thing just stay where I want it to. As you can see, it's already going back up again since the PID system is a little bit slow on figuring out what's going on. Things I need to change. Okay, other than the rolling, everything seems to be going okay. Still need quite a few tweaks. I have never had to mess around with a PID system more than with this build. Okay, we have laser detectors and smoke dispensers all along the two sides of the vehicle. Now, we didn't necessarily have to put these on the outside in the same way as the munition warners, but honestly, I'm just running out of space on the inside. I still need a little bit more ammo for this vehicle, and we now have our torpedo system currently locked in. We just need to armor up around the bottom section. So right now, we are very, very close to being done. All we need to do is, like I say, the new ammo section, some more armor, and then the back section for all of the lovely propellers. And this craft is ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the lightning hoods. Hopefully it will do okay. 
So I've decided we are indeed going down the route of shields. So originally I wasn't certain if this was a path we would go down, but after seeing how expensive this craft is going to be, coming in at around about 43,000 resource, I think adding some very weak shields will certainly be worth it. I would add stronger shields, but then we would need stronger engines, and it's just not worth the cost once again. We could go down the route of adding laser absorption shields, which of course will absorb laser damage, but since we already have the smoke and the laser detectors, I would rather have a wider array of defenses going with regular reflect shields, which would hopefully defend us against light fire from advanced cannons and perhaps the odd cram cannon shot. Not that I think the lightning hoods actually use cram cannons, but they certainly will be using advanced cannons. There we are, shields pretty much everywhere, and even shields on the turret, so whatever the turret is aiming at, it will be protected from. I'm really hoping all of these upgrades, which are very expensive, will be worth it in the long run. We are still made out of wood, and we are going to be against things like lasers, and much better advanced cannons, and I have this really, really horrible feeling this is just going to act like a really expensive ammo barrel, and simply detonate upon being hit. We will see. Okay, so shields have now been added everywhere, and there's now significantly more armor on the back, in addition to some more internal laser warners and a load more smoke dispensers. There's a couple of ammo processors, so hopefully that will keep us going during a fight, although I imagine our initial burst will never be surpassed by the fighting after that, especially with the missiles and the torpedoes. And finally, when not in combat, and when the battery goes above 90%, the engines turn down slightly, which means we're not going to be wasting power all of the time, so that is pretty darn awesome. So with all that, I think it's about time we go ahead and go into the campaign itself. I've also added the detection systems properly, and I have decided on a name of this thing. It's going to be called the Ammo Barrel. Here we are, back in the campaign, and I've decided, whilst we wait for the resources to spawn in our new sub, we are going to send the airship to destroy the rest of the Deepwater Guard, which honestly isn't going to be too difficult, so I will most likely cut a lot of that footage, unless it seems particularly brutal. Well, this is interesting. We are going against the Gotha. Now, this is an enemy I've seen before in a past campaign, but we haven't yet seen in this one, so if my camera would be so kind to eventually move. Let's have a quick look-see at it and see if it is indeed the correct plane. Which it is. Okay, so it has two advanced cannons on the front, it has a small advanced cannon on the back. It has bombs, by the looks of things. Now, here's the thing. Are those going to fire at us, or are those only going to attack things on the water? It looks like they very well could go for us as well, so we need to be a little bit wary about that. Either way, begin the battle properly. Flak shells there, taking out a lot of wing and a fair bit of armor. The main gun crippling the side, destroying one of its ammo barrels by the looks of things. And here come some cram cannons. Will they land? Yes, they will. And our anti-missiles completely negating its own missiles. I really do love this airship, it's just the balance of weaponry, it makes me so happy to see. Well Gotha, you were gorgeous, but thank you for your resources. Perhaps the last flying squirrel we're ever going to see. I lied, here's another flying squirrel. I love those flat cannons so much. Just having a quick look at the relationships table, and I've noticed something very, very annoying. The Lightning Hoods are bestest friends with the White Flyers, which means as we attack the Lightning Hoods, the White Flyers will become more and more annoyed at us until they eventually attack us as well. So what I'm thinking is that what we're going to need to do is have a very small fleet in our waters defending the backside from the White Flyers, and then we shall just continue to attack the Lightning Lightning Hoods and pretend the White Flyers don't exist, just defend against them over and over again and simply hope for the best. Now here's one thing, the Lightning Hoods are friendly 
with the Onyx Watch. I don't know if that means that we will make the Onyx Watch annoyed by attacking the Lightning Hoods. I'm really hoping not, because right now, me and the Onyx Watch, the Onyx Watch and I are best friends as well. So I guess we'll just see what happens. Behold the Red Tuna Legion! Well, here we go then. We now have the sub completely operational, so along with two of our lovely corn flags, we are going to go out and we are going to see what we can see. I think there may be one last tile of Deepwater Guard to simply go through and to act as a test for the sub, and then finally we will get our first fight against the Lightning Hoods themselves. Here we go, and let's see what is going to arrive. The enemy has a paddle gun, a red tuna, and a red tuna. Okay, then. Now, annoyingly, I can't spawn this underwater straight away, and that could be because it's in the wrong mode. Can I spawn it on minus? Maybe after this battle we will be able to. Either way, though, let's just put our flyers nice and awkwardly there. And let's begin. Just make sure they're all in combat mode. Excellent. We will go under the water very quickly. There we go, straight away under the water. Main guns are already firing. And being heavily countered by shields. That was the problem. However, still enough though to kill the first target. The cannon killing the second one fairly easily as well. Incoming the torpedoes, although the enemy is already long since dead. Okay, I think that's going to be just fine. Okay, good. It seems like at least after this line, the forces get a little bit weaker. Not that much weaker, but a little bit. I can handle 70s. 150, though, is ridiculous. Okay, so I think I'm going to attack this one, this tile, so that we can go to this tile and grab that resource zone. So everyone, go over here, kill this last little bit of deep water guard, except for that tile, and then we'll go towards the east. Well, nothing too special here, all the things we've already been fighting. Two dead, and just the red tuna left alive, apparently. Why are you taking so long to swap targets? They're both classed as being dead. Aim at this guy. Thank you. We had just enough materials to make a second ammo barrel, so that's what we're going with. These things counter lasers, and that's good enough for me. Well, lightning hoods, I'm afraid. I have now declared war, and annoyingly the Onyx Watch did actually go down in terms of our relationship. That is really irritating. Wow. Yeah, we are going to be fighting the White Flyers very, very soon by the looks of things. This is going to be so ridiculously difficult. Well, here we go then against the Sea Raptor, which costs almost double of the Malal's Will. A Tesla, about the same cost. A Om, which costs over double the Malal's Will. A Beluga Elite, which costs a fortune, and finally a Diode, one of the only cheap opponents there. Yeah, we are massively outmatched right now. Now, thankfully, in this game, not everything will spawn at once, so that's pretty good for us, at least. Ammo barrels stay somewhat far away, somewhere like that and that. Uh, Cornflake, you know you do best when you're very close range, so again, flank them. Airship, I don't know. And Malal's will get far back. And I want both the ammo barrels to spawn first, and apparently that's all that's going to spawn first. Please be using a lot of lasers, and please don't have the ability to go through the smoke too well. Okay, so the battle has started, and straight away, lasers are hitting us. Now, thankfully, we do have the smoke activating straight away as well, so that those lasers won't be too bad. They won't be doing too much damage. But what exactly is fighting us? We have the two Teslas. No, wait. One of them is the Tesla, the other is the Om. 
Oh, dear lord, look at all those missiles. Thank god we're going underwater. Oh my god, look at those torpedoes. Thankfully, mostly EMP, which has no effect on wood, so that's good. Go underwater quick. Do not allow those missiles to hit us. And on top, we have the Beluga Elite and the Diode. Am I meant to be calling this Ohechem or Um? I don't even know. Either way, they do look somewhat frail, though, so maybe we can have a chance. Yeah, those lasers are doing absolutely nothing now the smoke's out. Incoming our missile swarms. Where did that missile even come from? I don't even know what that missile was. It just hit that one. Oh, they have anti... Missile lasers, the annoying buggers, but look at that flak going through anyway. Oh, something just happened. Something just happened. Lots of lag. What just happened? Yeah, the lasers are doing nothing against us. Being underwater and having that smoke, we are taking damage. But look, it looks like it's doing nothing to the wood. <laughs> Consider yourself countered. The shells are doing quite a lot to the underside of this particular enemy. In fact, we may have bounced them up slightly. That's good. The Malal's Will has just spawned in. The missiles are taking out the Beluga Elite by the looks of things. That's that one, yes. So I will be getting names wrong for a while. Thank you, Missile Swarm. Oh, laser is hitting our lovely Malal's Will. Look at the difference. Without the smoke, it's just cutting through it. Thankfully, though, the Malal's Will has a lot of firepower as well, so it should be able to hold its own. Trying to look for the aircraft there, not quite finding it. Let's have another look with pause going on. Enemies absolutely everywhere. It's a bit difficult to tell what's going on. Okay, so AI dead from the Beluga Elite. That's great. Main cannon hitting several times on the front of this one, which is taking damage really well. The shells are doing nothing from the two ammo barrels. I think the lasers have actually taken out some of the internals of the Malal's Will. The smaller cannons are not firing right now. Damn, those shields are so bad. Okay, yeah, I need to change the shells that the ammo barrels are using. Oh, torpedoes coming in from the ammo barrel, crushing the underneath of that. Wonderful. Cram cannons to the rescue. Oh my god, I think we're going to win. I think we are going to win. Hello, airship. Welcome to the fight, sir. Oh, something's happened to you. Your engines have gone. Okay, we've lost the engine on one of the ammo boxes, so it's floated to the surface. I couldn't add enough rotor blades to keep it underwater. It can only sink when moving. Last enemy, which is the Sea Raptor. Oh, 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 painful. Stop, please. Something shoot that. Oh, no. The ammo box has gone down. The ammo box has gone down. It did take just enough damage to get killed. What a shame. Though it did hold their attention for long enough. Oh, look at that. The Malal's will just cutting through the side there. You know what? Stop. Everyone stop. It's already badly enough hurt. I don't feel bad capturing this now. The explosions are causing so much lag, they're not even loading in. Oh, are you going to die? I've just turned everything off. Don't die. I want to scrap you. You are worth more than half of my fleet. Who's closest? Oh, both our ammo boxes so badly hurt. The Malal's will, though, stood up to all that damage surprisingly well. Okay, airship. Let's go and capture a vehicle. Manual control. Oh no, as soon as I took manual control, the enemy died. Did we actually fully lose that ammo box? Yes, we did. One of the ammo box completely died. The other one just took a lot of damage. Overall, a massive loss of resources. But the thing is, we actually sodding won. I am so happy with that. I can't believe we actually won that. The, the ammo boxes are doing much better than I expected, but it seems like they do die eventually from prolonged exposure to those lasers and the fact they had torpedoes. It did hurt. It did hurt. Let's see if we can repair the ammo barrels fast enough before the next fight. I really want to use them again. 
I think, though, the one ammo barrel may have actually rammed into the terrain since I spawned it so close to some random rocks, they just instantly got hit. There we go. Spawn these two back in. Thank you. I'm going to quickly change the shell type they're using. After thinking about it for a while, I've decided we are not going to change the shell type for the ammo barrels. As much as I want to, they are just the fastest shells we can make with the base which allows the water movement and lowering the speed further I think would be a bigger detriment. I would much rather have shells being deflected and actually hit the target than shells missing because of their lack of speed. We may change them in the future if it really becomes an issue, but for now, I'm really happy with how that fight went. I've just looked at the time, and I have been playing from the depths now for way too many hours building that sub, so I am going to call the episode here. In the next episode, we are going to focus solely on the campaign, no more vehicle building, because I want to take over this resource zone, and I want to ensure that we can protect against this. On the upside, if the white flyers do attack us, we can instantly then move upwards and try to take this resource zone. It does seem like eventually, eventually, we will have to fight the Onyx Watch because they are getting annoyed at our current actions, which is a big shame, honestly. I really wish they would hate each other more. And actually, looking at it, I just realized something. Because we are allies, the Onyx Watch now dislikes the Lightning Hoods more than it did a moment ago. I did not know it worked that way, so maybe we won't have to fight the Onyx Watch after all. Maybe the Onyx Watch will continue to be the best bros and will just sit there allowing us to kill the other factions. So thank you, Onyx Watch. I don't want to fight you again. I have fought you so many times. Can we not be friends? So, yeah, we are calling the episode here. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. That was a really good first fight. Maybe we just got lucky with the designs, but I am so scared for the future battles. Oh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.